Hey, James, I really appreciate you joining me today. Um, so before we kind of dive into this, uh, just take a moment to introduce yourself. Well, good afternoon. I'm James Ray. I'm the current Chief Growth Officer for Go Do Life. After working in consulting and corporate entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship um, over the last 36 years. Go Do Life is a company, it's financial inclusion is the cause. And we are serving the 80 million and growing underbanked in the United States. And when I say underbanked, it's because some people don't want to pay $30 to have a bank account, so they choose not to use the bank. Our mission is to bridge the gap between earned wages and the cost of living by eliminating unnecessary fees and eliminating predatory interest. That's, uh, awesome. that's it in a nutshell. Perfect. So how long have you been running uh, with Go Do Life and um, what, what exactly are you looking to do as far as taking the company? Where do you want to go long term? Well, uh, I've been with the company almost two years. I was originally, I joined the board of directors. They were looking for someone to join the board of directors with a payments background that I have. Um, I've worked for Elevon U.S. Bank and J.P. Morgan Chase uh, combined about 12 years in the payments industry. So I joined the board and as we decided what we were going to do with respect to financial inclusion, um, they asked me to join as CEO in July of 2021, three months after I joined the board. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is to use FinTech, much, much more modern technology than many banks use. And FinTech, is, of course, is a, a huge category. And in fact, the key investor who contacted me to join the board is, is uh, Tim Connors, he was the first investor in Chime. He's done very well with Chime uh, financially, but he was hoping that a digital free bank account on a mobile phone would help the underbank. He actually just, that's just describing what a millennial wants. So they got the millennial, they're the millennial bank. This is round two for Tim. And so we stepped back and said, what else do you want to do in terms of a bank? Because there are a lot of neo banks out there and there's a lot of churn in the membership because millennials, while they like free and digital and smartphone, they also like incentives even more. So there's a lot of churn going on. Similar to the time when we finally got our mobile phone portability. What happened when the FCC made that ruling every carrier was trying to poach from the others with increasing incentives. That's exactly what's going on in the neobank. So, Tim, we decided this has got to be financial inclusion, not just a bank. And what we mean by that is certainly have a bank account, no fees, have earned wage access, which is an entire category in FinTech right now, to be able to advance wages that have been earned but not yet paid between paychecks. Because often within the people who are working paycheck to paycheck, unexpected expenses causes them to have to borrow. Borrow from friends, family, or predatory lenders. And none of those three are a good choice. Mm -hmm. So that's our cornerstone. That's what we're launching now. We're in the market now. We are adding features to, in the coming quarters, remittances, because a number, a great percentage of this demographic are remitting funds back to their country of origin. So remittance is very, very important. And we're coming partnered with a uh, company that cuts that cost in half from the mainstays, Western mm -hmm. Union and MoneyGram. And then bill payment. It has to be in the same app because right now, yes, we have digital notification of when our bills are due and what the payments are and so forth. But I get some on email, I get some on um, text and I lose them. 
So by having a partner who aggregates all of that biller information and allows us to present it to the individual, now we can teach them and coach them on how to manage, manage their money. Awesome, awesome. So it's obviously a, a fairly broad target market that you're, that you're trying to help here. Um, if someone was looking into to this type of, of banking, who, who exactly are you trying to help? What, who is your target market? This is a target market. I mentioned 80 million are underbanked mm -hmm. and many of them have an average household income of $48,000. And so they don't have a lot of extra cash. They typically are hourly work wage earners mm -hmm. and they struggle from paycheck to paycheck. Rather than going direct to consumer by running ads in Facebook and on television and like the neobanks have burned billions of dollars of doing, we're going through aggregators. And what I mean by that, any employer who wants to offer this benefit at no cost to them and at no cost to their employee is a target. And we specifically are fo focusing in sectors where high volume but low margin. And the reason we do that is because those in the industries include casual dining, convenience stores, grocery, and hotel hospitality. Mm -hmm. They're selling the same thing, and they com they compete for comp for for customers within their sector. So they don't have any pricing power. Everybody's got to sell it, and if you don't know it, but grocers their their bottom line is less than five percent. Mm -hmm billions of dollars in sales, less than 5%. And so we chose those because they employ a lot of people. They have a lot of turnover, particularly now as we are basically in full employment in America. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of churn. And so we're offering this as a benefit that makes a difference. And we didn't do, we did the research. We did not do primary research, but we have enough to assure that they're the owner, operator, employer is going to struggle to recruit and retain as these capabilities become mainstream. So Absolutely. going through aggregators, the employers, associations, institutions, foundations, we work and we partner with them to execute on this promise. Awesome. Awesome. So as you've gone through the process of development and bringing this to market, um, what are some mistakes that you, you've made within the company or maybe some lessons that you've learned that other entrepreneurs can learn from irregardless of their industry? Uh, a challenge, is, many challenges, certainly. Um, it's not as easy as it sounds to become a, another fintech in this, in this world. Um, Product matters, user experience matters more. So we've had to trim back to ensure a great consumer experience to launching one feature at a time, rather than waiting until it's all ready to go and put it out there with all the bells and whistles. We had to get to minimum viable product and we're there now, we're launching there. And while we do have partners and we have a lot of fintech capabilities available to us to help us launch. They're busy too. Um, the first time going through getting a program manager or a Visa card or a MasterCard, finding a sponsor bank, and then setting up issuing with all the compliance and regulatory burdens that a go along with that. Those are the lessons that we were under undereducated about. I'll say that. And so uh, we got through the regulation pretty quick, but ultimately every fintech has a story and some of them it's to, to get the full benefit of that story. It's, it's a lot harder to achieve because that fintech is not universally delivering on the promise. 
So <laughs> it's there are a lot of holes because yeah, it's fast growth, but ultimately can't rely on the the um, the use case that's going to be straight to the matter. It's it's really a lot more complicated than that. Sure, sure. So <clears throat> as you've gone through your, your work life and your experiences, have you had a great coach or a great mentor that has stood out? And if so, why would you say that person? Uh, well, yes, I've had many mentors, but I would suggest um, uh, one of them is pretty uh, archaic, I guess. He, his name is George Prince. And in 1951, he and another group out of A.D. Little, many people don't know A.D. Little, but that was a consulting firm back in the 50s and 60s. They created a company called the Invention Group. And they would look at industry issues and challenges and invent something that will solve that for them. And they would present it to the company. And we all know this saying, not invented here. So it was a perfectly good resolution for the challenge, but not invented here. Sorry, guys. So they changed their entire business to facilitate innovation within organizations. And I first went through their course when I was with Arthur Anderson many years ago, 30 years ago. Um, and it, I learned the value of facilitating innovation rather, rather than trying to be a lone wolf. And the methods and the techniques that they developed to increase the inclusion are so subtle, but so effective. That was the most important education that I've had in my career. George Prince, the founder, when I went to work for that company, after training people at Anderson, AT&T, NCR, I finally went to, to work with them. And I had the very, very privilege to spend time with George Prince and really understand how his mind worked. And he is the most amazing, he's passed on, but he was the most amazing individual of how to craft an interaction where the best ideas come out and everyone supports the outcome. Because if you've been in corporate America, you've probably seen this if you've not heard it this way public compliance and private defiance. In that room, we all agree we're gonna support this. And when they walk out of the room, three or four are saying, it'll never work. So we eliminated that with Synectix and George Prince was that mentor. Awesome, awesome. So <clears throat> leaning back on your experience, if you were talking to a young person that is starting their first business in today's economy, what would your number one piece of advice be to them? Wow. Um, first of all, have an open mind. Because how much ever education you have, how much ever experience you have, uh, there, there's, there's two words that I use to describe uh, coming out of my, my master's program. And it is context matters. What worked here won't work there. And you can't say, well, that worked perfectly. Let's go do it again for another company. Context matters. And so you have to adapt to the conditions of any audience and to understand that challenges might look the same, but there are many, many different causes. So have an open mind and recognize that context matters. Don't feel like, oh man, we nailed that. I can do it again. You have to dig in to not just the problem, but the people and understand and, and um, evoke and surface. What are the underlying tensions that might be there and what the political, political situation is in an organization. That's what you learn from doing consulting as long as I did. And so, but I'd say 
recognize that context matters. Absolutely. Awesome. So <clears throat> if you were to find a business owner watching this video that is interested in having that edge that sets them apart, being able to offer that additional service by partnering with Go Do Life, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you to learn more? Well, they can visit us at godolife.com and there's a, that the website will walk you through the offering. Um, anyone that's considering it, I, I would recommend that you recognize that it's not just a HR thing. It's a business thing because we all know the, the, um, the costs of replacing an employee. And we all in this employment environment, we all know it, how difficult it is to recruit the right people and to retain them. And so these capabilities that we're offering for free is to give you an advantage against other employers who are not yet using this platform. Now, you, you haven't asked me, but you have to know we're not doing this as charity. We are using the interchange generated by the MasterCard debit card that we issue to the individual. Their direct deposit allows us to advance their earned wages and to repay those wages. So you need to know that it's, it's not, we're not doing this for free, but sure. we're not charging interest on the loan, the advance. It's a, not alone. It's an advance. And ultimately, um, it is the interchange that repays us the costs of floating that advance, because we're not using the owner's money to advance them. So we advance our funds. They don't have to track the advances. We re, re, uh, repay them on their next payday. So you can learn a lot at the uh, website, but it probably wouldn't be, and you wouldn't get all that out of the website. I'll just put it that way. So as an owner, if you're looking to have a benefit like this, that will help you maintain recruiting and retention at no cost to you and no cost to them, come to our, our, our website. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that additional information as well. So my last question, you're obviously very passionate about go do life and, and what you're bringing to the market here. So my last question is what most inspires you as you continue to move forward today? Well, it's really making a tangible difference. Um, I've been blessed in this life. I grew up in a household that was paycheck to paycheck. That's why when Tim called me, I said, yes, I will join the board. I will lend to you, share with you what I know about the industry that allows us to operate at a low cost so that we're not having to charge individuals. So having that impact, GoDo gives me an opportunity to do those two things, give back to society and build a, build a business. And so for me, uh, that's what keeps me going. And I have a lot of outside interests, but ultimately this is a demographic I came from. This is a, this is a demographic that a lot of people have come from. And people get on that treadmill, paycheck to paycheck, and it's very, very difficult once you start lend, taking on predatory lenders. So that's mm -hmm. our pri primary uh, driver. Awesome. Awesome. James, thank you so much for joining me today and, and sharing a little bit of your story as well as about Go Do Life. Um, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure, Nate. Thank you.